today let's see how this meteor rain effect is done in Unreal. This is a great exercise to learn more about generate events in Niagara, plus I'm gonna show you a few more tricks. I obviously made quite a few variations here and they are all available on the marketplace and on my Patreon page as well, but I'm still gonna show you a simplified version of this. So without further ado, let's jump right into this, I just wanna say these videos are possible thanks to my patrons, and by supporting me you get access to plenty of visual effects you can use in your games. So let's begin by creating an agri-meter in a folder, right click, effects, agri-meter. We can choose new emitter and then select an empty. So I can show you the whole process of setting up an agri-meter from scratch. This one is gonna be for the bright edge of the meteor itself. And once you double click to open this agri-meter on the emitter update, we want this to emit something. We can use the spawn rate, so it continuously spawns a value of 2 particles per second. And on initialized particle, we can already take care of the color. We can use a direct set and we can use some absurd values so it becomes really bright, like 760 for the R channel, 160 for the G and 0 for the B. And this position of set that we are going to use is to essentially control where does the meteor itself start. And we are gonna set this a value of 1200 on the Z axis. Let's also take care of the sprite size mode, let's say uniform. You could use a random uniform if you want some of them to be random, by the way. But for now they will all have 25 for their size. From here let's imagine we want them to be spawned within a certain radius. And for that we can use a shape location module in the particle spawn. We can leave the shape primitive as sphere and we can even control the scale of this sphere. For example, 25 for the X and Y and 0 for the Z will transform this basically into a circle. Another thing we can already take care of is the velocity. Let's use an add velocity node and we automatically get a warning saying there's unmet dependencies. Basically there's modules that are missing. And it even suggests which modules are missing. We can click on fix issue and it will automatically add the solve forces and velocity module in the particle update. Quite useful. Now on the velocity, since they are way above on the Z in the sky, we can now make it rain with a value of minus 10,000 on the Z axis as well. This is also the place where you can control if you want them to come sideways, for example. And since this is a meteor rain, they will eventually hit something on the ground. And we can take care of that in the particle update with a collision module. This way it will collide with any geometry it touches. And we want to make sure that we kill the particle. One way to do it is by turning on advanced aging rate and set it to a ridiculous value like this. Another module that can be useful is the scale sprite size by speed, which will scale the particle according to its speed. And for the minimum x and y, 0 0.5 and 0 0.7, and for the maximum 4 and 10. Another very important step is if we want to spawn particles whenever this meteor hits the ground, or spawn a ribbon, a trail attached to this particle, we need to generate some kind of event. On the particle update, there's three events, collision, death and location. We are going to need first the location, so we can spawn a ribbon, a trail, and we need a generate death event. So we can spawn like a bright flash whenever it hits the ground or some particles. Immediately as soon as we add these generate events, we get this red warning triangle. And if you go read about it, it essentially requires persistent IDs. So Niagara can create an ID for each particle and know what's what. So if you select the wall emitter and scroll up, you will find requires persistent IDs. As soon as we enable it, the warning goes away. Finally, on the renderer, one of the last things we want to do for this Niagara meter is align the particle with its velocity, so it doesn't go sideways. So on alignment, let's choose velocity align it. And here we go, this is what we have so far. It's essentially only the head of the meteor. Alright, so let's save this Niagara meter and go back to our scene, to our level, to our map. And let's use this in an Niagara system. So on the folder, with right click on VFX, we can create an Niagara system. 
create empty system and rename it to NES underscore Meteor Rain, for example. Double click to open this up and on this plus sign down here on the track, we can go to parentimeters and select the one we have created. Here we go. We can save this Meteor Rain. Let me just dock this here. And now on the content drawer, we can even drag and drop this Niagara system to the scene to see how it is in your map. And here we go, it's a start. And you can play a little bit with this. For example, we can cover a bigger area by increasing the spawn rate. And then in shape location, increasing the radius on the non-uniform scale of this sphere. You get the idea, you can play with the rate, with the radius, and with start position, the position of set in the initialized particle. Right, so don't forget to save the Niagara system and let's move on to our next part, which is another Niagara emitter. You can create an empty emitter. This one is for the trail, the ribbon. Let's open it up and the first thing we need to change is in the render. We don't want to render a sprite, we want to render a ribbon. Let's select ribbon render. We have the default ribbon material. You can find it by clicking on this folder with a magnifying glass icon. They are actually quite useful. We can even create a material instance, rename it to mi underscore trail, add, which is additive. You can drag and drop this to another folder, by the way. You can save it and then assign it on our Niagara meter trail on the render. Search for trail. And here we go. Now, on the emitter update, for a ribbon, we need a beam emitter setup, so the beam can have a start and an end. On the lifetime, now, we can say it's 0 0.5, we don't want this to be too long. And then on the ribbon wide mode down here, we can say it's direct set, a value of something like 5 for now, we can adjust it later. Now we want to control how the ribbon is faded. So on the particle update, let's use a scale color where we have RGBA together and then we can convert this to a curve vector 4 from curve it will become a gradient I'm going to put the same values for the color the first key and for the last key I'm going to say it's black 0, 0, 0 and then more or less around a third I'm going to use this color right here 4.5 for the R and 0 0.25 for the G and 0 for the B it's an orange so we have the gradient now we want to control how wide it's going to be throughout its lifetime. For that, on the particle update, since it's continuously updating, we need to use the set parameters. So on the plus sign, we can go get the ribbon wide of the particles. In here, we are going to convert this float to a curve because we want this to be thicker when it's closer to the edge and thinner at the end, right? So let's actually select all of the keys and with right click, choose auto. So it becomes a busy curve, essentially. And on the first key, the value of this is going to be 70. And we can leave the last key as it is. Now, a very important step is to handle the generate event that we have created on the meteor. In this case, up here on the stage, we want an event handler. So we can then, on the plus sign, receive the location event. For now, the location event is going to be empty. But on the event handler properties, we can say the execution mode is to spawn particles and the spawn number, something like one will do. If we save this Niagara emitter and then go back to our Niagara system, we can connect these two. Let's first add the Niagara emitter, the trail we created on the track down here or with right click on the grid, by the way. Let me put it right here. And on the event handler properties, now we can say the source is going to be from the Niagara meter meteor, more specifically, the location event. And as soon as we do it, we get this amazing trail coming out of the meteor. And we essentially have the basic of the meteor done at this point. Now we are going to improve a little bit on top of this. So I'm going to press F2 to rename this emitter to trail underscore add, which is the additive one. We are going to add a black background to the meteor so it creates a nice contrast and then with ctrl c and ctrl v or with ctrl d we can duplicate this emitter and with f2 rename it to ab which is alpha blended which is essentially the way we can render darker colors and we need to make a change the material cannot be this one let's click on this icon 
And now with Ctrl D, we can duplicate this MI underscore trail additive and change this to AB in the material properties override. Let's set the blend mode to translucent. And then save this. And if we go back to our Niagara system, on the trail AB, now we can assign the trail AB material that we just created. This way, we are able to have dark color. On color mode, let's set it to a black color. 0, 0, let's leave the alpha at 1 and we can make this one larger on the ribbon white to 100. We can add another key, for example, at 0 0.1 and say it's 130. Right click and set it to auto. This way it will become a little bit larger. As you can see, if I isolate this Niagara meter, this is how this darker trail looks and it creates a really nice contrast. That's at least how we have done all of these meteor rain effects, which by the way, as I said in the beginning, they are available on the marketplace, links below. Alright, looking good. So one of our next steps is to take advantage of the generate event on death. Basically let's spawn particles whenever this hits something. So with right click let's create a new emitter, an empty one, rename it to NE underscore beam, double click to open it up and the first thing we want to do is decrease the lifetime to 0 0.2, it's going to be a quick flash. Let's also say the sprite size is uniform to a value of 500 and then we want to fade this out with a scale color where we can say the RGBA is together and then convert this vector 4 to a curve. And the first key is going to be a bright orange and not a bright white like I did, my bad. Or you can try a different color obviously. And then we are going to add another key, more or less at a third with a value of 3 for the R, 1.8 for the G and 1.2 for the blue. Which is basically a dull orange. Here we go. Another thing this quick flash needs is a scale sprite size on the particle update. And on this curve we are going to add a key more or less around here at 0 0.1 with a value of 2. So it starts big and then shrinks. Now for this to work with the meteor emitter, we need to add a stage for the event handler. And in here, we want to receive the death event, which will come out of the meteor. Let's just say the execution mode is spawn particles. One in the spawn number. Back in our Niagara system, let's add in the track, in parent, the NE beam, which is going to be for our flash. And first thing we want to do is, on the event handler properties, receive the death event from the meteor. And if we save this, go back to our level, to our map. If I quickly add a plane to simulate the ground, let me just reset the location to 0, 0 and increase the scale to 200, 200 and 1. And here we go. Every time the meteor dies, it creates this bright flash. I would suggest you to use a custom texture and play a little bit with the color, by the way. Now, another thing we can already take care of is another Niagara emitter for some particles, for some sparks whenever this hits the ground. And you can add the new empty emitter. I'm gonna rename it to Impact Particles. And well, for this one, the lifetime, if we click on this arrow, we can say it's a random range float. Some will live less, like 0 0.3, and others will live 0 0.8, a while longer. Let's set the color, direct set, something like 500 for the R, 100 for the G, and 0 for the B. Very bright indeed. And for the size non-uniform, we want to squeeze them in the X, like 5, and stretch them in the Y, like 15. On the particle spawn, we also want this to have velocity. Once again, let's click on Fix Issues, because we haven't met dependencies. Let's say it's from a cone, and the velocity can be random as well, between 2000 and 10,000. We want the cone to face up, so let's say the X and Y is 0 and 1 in the Z for the cone axis. We can increase the angle, like 100 for example, so it spreads a little bit more. And on the particle plate now, let's use gravity, so we can pull them down. A crazy value like minus 10,000 in the Z. And once again, the scale sprite size by speed, which will adjust the size of each particle according to its speed. You can try these values, for example, and then another module for the scale sprite size, so we can shrink them 
with this curve they start big and then they end small and now we need the event handler once again click on the plus sign of the stage and add a receive death event as well same thing as we did for the flash and now the execution mode is going to be for spawned particles with a spawn number of 40 for example and in alignment before we go to our Niagara system let's make sure they are aligned with our velocity vector otherwise they go sideways and select velocity aligned let's save this impact particles I'm going to close this emitter and in the Niagara system we can on the track for example in the parent emitters add the impact particles let me place it right here nicely first thing I'm going to do is say the event handler the source is set to death event of the meteor and we should probably already see something let's save this and on the level here we go we have beautiful particles hitting the ground and that's pretty much it I'm just gonna change the color of the impact here we go and if you want you can make it go sideways and whatnot right here alright looking good So with this technique I created a few more versions that I made available on the marketplace, on my website and on my Patreon page as well. If you support me on my Patreon you get access to plenty more assets, by the way. Quick thank you to all the patrons that supported me last month. And a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageris, Alan Alstead, Aviat Tobali, Cybercradle, Daniel Schmidt, Dark Kingdom, Diego Mar, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Jared Billy, Roland Salazar, Casey Miller, Leon Old, Lutuli, Matt Mohorn, Mike Bell, Matt Sims, Nikolai Yelnazov, Oitsk, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Shan Aguilar, Tin, Travis McCallum, Verisuta, Whatever Marta, Will Pullion, Zoya Kanash, Bizina Seru, Tonakoto, Xian Kianlin, and Mi Jane Kim. Thank you all for your support you guys are amazing and you keep this channel going so that's it guys thanks for watching and see you on the next one